Welcome to UltraCast, a place where two old friends try to make sense of this thing that we call life. Along the way, you're going to hear some uh, adult concepts and some things that are pretty juvenile, as well as the occasional piece of profanity. So, if hearing shit, fuck, piss, cocksucking motherfucker offends you at all, you should probably just shut it off right now. That being said, if, you, uh, if you're brave and you want to take a deep look into the recesses of your soul, stick around for your host, Matt Walker and Eddie Kernan. An ultra cast. All right, so uh, that right over there is Matt Walker, and that's Eddie Kernan. And how are you today? So what we're doing is we are discussing on this particular episode uh, changing your life. You know, are you tired of your fucked up, miserable, piece of shit life? Do you wish that it was better? Well, you know, so what the fuck are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it, Matt? Oh, I've got big plans. Yeah. I've got big plans. I've got a list of things that I'm, I need to change about my life. That we're, we don't, we're not going to live forever, and I don't want to croak without experiencing something closer to my higher self, man. I mean, that's, if there's anything that's worth working on, that's worth your attention, that's worth your energy... It's that. Let's have that experience. Let's ex- let's see what it's like to be the best Matt Walker I could be. You know, that is actually you know what, and it, that's awesome because now we get to go down the woo woo path. You oh, know, yeah, my favorite path. Get like all crazy and everything. I'll get to tell my my trans dimensional mirror story. Oh, good God! I love I love my my trans dimensional mirror story. But this reminds me of something that I mean I don't even think you know this. All right. This is like the coolest thing ever. This is a realization that came from a, from a 17-year-old girl. Okay. Back when I was a 17-year-old boy. Okay. You know, I had my high school sweetheart, the love of my life. You know, she was uh, just completely fucking awesome. Little heavy metal girl for, for me, the little heavy metal boy. You know, the first day that I met her, she was wearing an Iron Maiden shirt. It was fucking meant to be. You yeah, know, it yeah, just yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I was a complete and total fucking dipshit and uh, I didn't realize what I had and I, and I like lost my little heavy metal girlfriend and, um, you know, she went off to a different, like she went off to be with a fucking poser, fucking poser. God damn it. It happens. You know? But then she realized the guy was a fucking poser. So we got back together, right? That happens too. And then all of a sudden, uh, she realized that I was like a dick. Okay. I'm, a, I'm just like a total dick. <laughs> okay. And she and uh, I wasn't treating her right. And and you know what? It wasn't even a matter of maybe I could do better. It's like I would rather have nothing than not be treated right by this dude who I'm so good to. And and you know I'm paying the price to this day with a string of bad girlfriends. Sure. For not being a good guy to this chick. But anyway, the, one of the last times that I saw her, you know, she dropped out of school when she was 17. And, dude, this, this chick was smart. She was very book smart. She could have she aced shit and, you know, got scholarships and whatever. But she didn't. And she dropped out of school. She ran away from home. And she was living in downtown Seattle in her car wow. by herself at wow. 17. And she met some older dude, and she was waiting to turn 18 so she could marry him, right? So she came back, wow. and she was telling me about how she was going to go, and she was going to, like, go to school <clears throat> and study, you know, electronics or some shit. And, uh, you know, my response was, you know, because I was stoned at the time. Eddie. I know. There was a time I was a sinner. I, I did bad things. Oh, man. But I... I, uh, what I did was I, I looked at her and I said, you know, well, you know, maybe it's just the marijuana talking, but that sounds really difficult. And she said, you know, we're going to be here anyway. You might as well work towards what you want. And mm-hmm. I thought that was mm-hmm. ridiculously sage advice from a 17 year old girl. Maybe, maybe it was like the, the, the THC enhancement or whatever, but I was like, that is a brilliant way to live your life. And 
you know what you just said, we're not going to live forever. Absolutely not. You might as well work towards what you want. I mean, why the fuck not? Exactly. What <laughs> we got something better to do? Yeah. You know. Absolutely. No, I agree. It's like do do you just want to do you want to just sit around and like have your biggest goal be being able to waste time watching TV, masturbating and eating corn chips because, you know, that doesn't sound like any way. What was that movie? Animal House? Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life. It's true. It's <laughs> and, true. And that, was, and that was me a while ago, you know? Fat, drunk, and stupid, man. Uh, uh, you and I are coming from a, a special place on this subject, though, because I think the difficulty comes when people achieve comfort. They find a place that they're comfortable, even if it's not their higher self, even if they're not you know, anywhere near any kind of potential. Where, where's the motivation? I already have comfort. I've got a job. I don't really like it, but it pays the bills. I got a woman I don't really love, but you know, she takes care of my needs. We've been together a long time. I live in a house I don't like in a town I don't like, but you know, I'm familiar with it and you know, it's almost paid off and <clears throat> people get stuck in these situations. <clears throat> you and I, <laughs> but you and I uh, had comfort. The, the comfort rug got pulled out from under us. And it, right. that was a real gift. That was a real gift for us to go, okay, if I'm going to pick up the pieces, if I'm going to build something, what is it I want to build? Let's make sure there are a lot of pieces. You know, this, there, these, these pieces are too big and too intact. Let me really destroy yeah, them so I, yeah. got, so I can spend a lot of time picking up some pieces. Absolutely. And I don't think this is a Matt and Ed story. I think this is, this is part of the human experience, man, is it... Um, whether you look at it as um, some kind of divine intervention, you look at it like Jungian synchronicities, uh, the, the Hindu Kali, the Dionysus, but shit falls apart, and that's a great opportunity. I think you have a word for that. Yeah, the Christertunity. You know, I wish that I could. St- oh, God damn it! I wish I could take credit for this. <laughs> My reference is so fu- it, it just it makes me feel like a like a douchebag. But I think it's the Chinese, and we. We just watched this this thing, Finding Joe, about Joseph Campbell, the hero's journey, shit like that. What a great what a great thing to check out if you're looking for answers, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but they actually said in in this movie that I think it's the Chinese that there are two symbols for crisis, and one of them is like destruction, and the other one is opportunity, you know. So the the Chinese symbol for uh, for crisis is like destruction and opportunity. So it's the Christertunity. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I actually found that out a long time ago, and it was something Lisa Simpson said to Homer on The Simpsons. Oh, nice. So I've got sage advice from uh, from Matt Groening in The Simpsons. Yes. But you know what? Matt Groening, pretty, pretty sharp guy, you know, actually, uh, you know, changed – Changed the uh, the whole lens of pop culture, and I remember back when in Seattle he did these little goofy cartoons in the Rocket. You know, our little local oh yeah yeah our local underground culture newspaper. You know, and uh, and when he started getting interviewed, he'd talk about how he you know just the norm wasn't good enough for him, and he like really dug Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention and. Anything that was like outside of yeah, yeah. normal comfort, and, and and you know what an ironic thing that now The Simpsons is like been around for so long that it's not considered cutting edge or anything like that anymore. And you know, I absolutely, don't. yeah, yeah. But there is there's a lot of wisdom in in uh, Christertunity. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think you can take it further than that, and you you kind of are familiar with. Um, the events that started me on this path of, 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 of self-improvement that came from Duncan Trussell through Joe Rogan. This idea that if we live in a universe with infinite like, like parallel dimensions. I love this story. It's so fucking good. And, and I have proof positive that it's real. <laughs> it, and I am too, absolutely. So in, in 2012... <clears throat> I was going through a really difficult time, and I had been for a decade. Um, I was living in Alaska. I weighed 318 pounds. I had two autoimmune diseases, one of which was incurable and had a 50% suicide rate. 
because of what it did to your body. And I felt like I was doomed. I was just doomed. I'd been miserable for so long. And then my son came to me and he said, Dad, there's this comedian and he talks about the stuff that you talk about. And I think you need to check it out. His name's Joe Rogan. He has a podcast. It's free. So I downloaded the Joe Rogan podcast, the most current one, just checking it out. Well, he happened to have Duncan Trussell on there. <clears throat> Duncan Trussell lay this out. If we have infinite parallel universes and each one of them has a Matt Walker in it or an Ed Kern in it or a Duncan Trussell in it, each one of them is a little bit different. One of them is the best possible. It's your highest self. It's the best manifestation of Eddie Kernan or of Matt Walker that there could be. This is, the, this is why it's the ultra cast. This is, we're talking about ultra Eddie. We're talking about ultra Matt. The best. The best you could be. Now, take a look at that guy. What's different about that guy in the life that you're living, the person that you are? Those differences, that's the shit you got to work on. And when I did that thought exercise, when I looked at my life and the way I was living it, and I said, could I do this better? Oh, golly, I could do so much better. And I couldn't unthink that. I couldn't, I couldn't unknow that. And that's when I started. I changed my diet. I started exercising. And, and since then, almost every single aspect of my life has been turned upside down. And that's like, and so like, what do you do when, uh, you know, when the, the negative thoughts start coming in and everything? I mean, how do you... It, because I know we've had plenty of discussions where, where it's like, oh, nothing will ever be good again. Oh, today yeah. is a bad day. Yeah. How do you get out of that? Do you just sit there and think, what would Ultra Matt do? Um, is, is that what you do? What do you do? <laughs> yeah, actually, that sometimes sometimes that helps. What helps more for me is that I immediately got results. Um, I, I I would I weighed three eighteen. I and, lost one hundred and twenty pounds. Yeah, what way, do you, what you do you know? weigh currently today? Uh, one ninety eight. So it's actually exactly one hundred and twenty pounds that I've lost since since twenty twelve. Most of which in the first year. I had the two autoimmune diseases that were untreatable, uncurable. I've I'm a hundred percent remission on those. Um, I, I've changed a lot of my life. I, so my life is so much better than it was then by you making were on- these. How many medications when you were 300 oh, and how much pounds? I think I had 10 different how pharmaceuticals many, that I took daily. How many pharmaceuticals do you are you currently on? Uh, zero, actually. And you don't need them and you have no autoimmune diseases. Uh, right, all. right. And I feel better mentally and physically than I did at any point in my life. I, now, at 45, here, I'm better than I was at 17. Now, here's the big question. It's so like that's you lost over a hundred fucking pounds, man. That's that's amazing. Were you hungry? No, no. And and how the fuck did you pull that one off? You know, like I lost a hundred pounds, but I wasn't hungry for a moment. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's kind of interesting. I and, and did you have to like sit there and like and like just like oh well I live on fucking heads of iceberg lettuce yeah, now. Absolutely I mean, not. No. No. no so no. I, and I'm like this is for the benefit of anybody listening that. That, that one person that accidentally fucking tuned in, but I know what you did. And, you know, here I lost 50 pounds in, um, well, I lost 50 pounds in six months, but you're, you, which sounds incredible it until is incredible. you hear about you losing over 100. <laughs> and then it's kind of like, oh, wah, wah, I guess I'm <laughs> coming in not. second. No, absolutely not. Poor me, I only lost 50, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a shame. Well, you had less to lose, first of all. So, Not um, that much less. I was like a whopping two fucking 80. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, the, the way it went down was, like I said, you, I compared myself to Ultra Matt. You know, what are the differences between my higher self and my current self? And then I, one by one, I went after these things. And I, the way I approached it was, I'm going to find people. Who have successfully slayed this demon, whatever, whatever one it was. And I had a list. I had a dozen things that I felt absolutely needed to change. And when I went down the rabbit hole and I got online and I started looking at, okay, this immune disease, how have people, you know, found success? How about this one? How about clinical depression? How about acne? How about weight loss? How about, you know, anxiety? Every single one of those things, I found the same answer and I couldn't ignore it. Every one of them, the people who had dealt with it successfully and changed their lives, changed the way they eat. And they, they changed the way they eat from 
high calorie, high inflammation foods with very little actual nutrition in them, they flipped that around and they got food that was really high in nutrition and really low in inflammation and preservatives and processing, basically what they call the paleo diet. So when I switched to eating things that my ancestors evolved eating and they did not evolve eating meat lovers pizzas, they did not evolve, you know, so oh, man, right. Meat and, lovers pizza. That was, <laughs> that was my Achilles fucking heel. Oh, it was, it's a lot of people's Achilles oh. fucking heel. I mean, there's a reason there's a Papa John's on every street corner. I mean, it's, it's a big, it's a big part of how we, uh, it's a poor substitute for nutrition. I don't even want to use that word, but it's, it's how we fill our bellies. Uh, McDonald's uh, and so on. So well, when I, think I did it's that, it's important to like kind of just take a minute and yeah. like point out that these a lot a lot of these fast food things and your little debbies and your bullshit like that. You know, these people have like I mean, maybe not honest to god scientists, but maybe because they're they are chemically engineering this shit to look good and taste good and activate pleasure centers yes, in your brain yes, activate yeah you know because your body knows it's not food and that's yeah. why it's making you fat is because yeah. your body's like fucking i can barely use any of this as fucking energy you know why is it that you can fucking snarf down that fucking quarter pounder and the supersized fries and drink a fucking you know a half a fucking jug of fucking coca-cola because you're not getting any fucking fuel to run your body on that shit. Exactly. You know, so you're sitting there going, I'm still hungry. Yes. It's like my, my fucking stomach is full, but I'm still fucking hungry. And then your body's like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with all exactly. this? Exactly. Exactly. I'm going to tuck it away in this corner over here and see if I can deal with it later. And that's how you get fucking morbidly obese. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when you switch that to, you know, natural foods um, that you can eat the living shit out of yeah that's that's why i was never hungry i could eat all i wanted of of certain things just avoiding other things and then when i incorporated some exercise into into the program that's when it really took off that was next level the nutrition was half of it getting a little even a little bit i'm, I'm not you know a, a meathead i don't uh, i don't have a gym membership i don't try to get all huge um but just a little exercise honestly Five minutes of exercise in a day changes my outlook for two days. It's amazing. Well, let's talk about that, though, too, because, you know, then you get your endorphins and shit yeah, like that. Yeah. You and I are both real cerebral kind of fellows that have problems with overthinking things. <laughs> indeed, and, indeed. You know, going to, it's like, oh, man, I'm going to sit here and, you know, like, I feel fine right now. So, well, we can't have that. You know, I'm going to sit here and and concentrate on something good until I've convinced myself that it's something bad, mm. you know. And uh, I find, personally, you know, when we get to the way that, it, that my life changed, uh, exercise was a, a really big part of it. Yeah, but yeah. Get yourself out of your head by getting yourself into your body. And yeah, yeah. Man, you start walking taller, you start feeling better, you start like, fuck this shit, I can kick some ass. And you know what? And I am. And, you know, negativity, you can just eat a bag of dicks. You know, that's all there is to it. Well, kind of. I don't think that's all there is to it. I think what we're shooting for is balance. So I, I, I think there's a time and a place to go into your head. There's a time and a place where you need to take oh, sure, paint it black, but... man. You got to poke holes and stuff. I, I can dig that, but <clears throat> you don't a want that to... There's a difference between negativity, though, and, and poking holes in something that's that's like bad. Analyzing something yeah, that, yeah. that, like, okay, well, maybe this isn't the best direction for me versus taking something that you know for a fact is the best direction for me and, like, filling it full of holes, you know? Well, how about a little mature ambivalence here, though? Like, it, it, it seems... To me, the older I get, the more I can see that things aren't good or bad. There's good stuff and bad stuff about everything. And so it really does require you going into your head and, and tossing things around a little bit um, to decide what, you know, where you're at on that. Is, do, do, the, do the risks you know, outweigh the benefits or do the benefits outweigh the risks? There's a lot of that. But again, you don't want to just be in your head. That's a recipe for depression and ugh. 
anxiety. So getting into your body, <clears throat> that's part of the human experience, man. Um, I, I don't think we evolved to sit in a chair. I don't think, I don't think we evolved to be in a cubicle and then get in your car seat and drive home and then sit on your couch until it's time to go back to your cubicle. I, that is never, ever going to work for anyone ever. Well, you know what? Let me just break away and give a little, because I completely agree. And you see all these desks now where, you know, bring your chair in. The desk, you know, goes down, you know, kick your chair away, stand up. And yeah, there's, yeah. This, there's this thing that I've been hearing a lot. Sitting is the new smoking. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, absolutely. And it is. We've gotten rid of smoking for, a, I, I don't think that today in 2017, there's anybody, including you, who's currently smoking i'm a smoker uh you know but i don't think that there's anybody who has any kind of illusion that this is actually not terrible for your fucking lungs. yes 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 you know i mean i think that everybody who smokes knows that it's like this is this is really pretty bad and i'd be better off if i didn't yes, do it yes you know but now the whole thing about sitting is bad you know what the fuck but i have to agree and i, I actually personally witnessed I had this girlfriend and she was taking care of her grandmother because her grandmother had nowhere to go. Her grandmother was just this horrible, bitter person that, you know, lived a life full of selfishness and, and, uh, just, oh, just, just like she had no friends. She had nowhere to turn. Mm -hmm. She had anybody who liked this woman would have their mind changed by her terrible selfish greedy actions yeah so she had my girlfriend at the time to take care of her and she had fallen and broken her hip and uh as a result she you know she didn't want to do the physical therapy to where she was going to be fine again she's like this physical therapy is like it hurts it it takes too much sure. effort so she never graduated past having a walker and she would get up in the morning and she would, you know, use her walker to get into the bathroom and then she would use her walker to get into the dining room and eat her food and then she'd use her walker to get to the, to, you know, one of those chairs that would lift you up, sit you down sure. and she would turn on the TV <clears throat> And she would sit there, and when anybody told her, it's like, you should really get up and move, she would yell and scream at them, bitch at them, tell them if you, you know, you haven't been around as long as I have, you don't know, this hurts, and yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Everybody would say, hey, uh, if you did it more, it would hurt less. She would say, you don't know, you don't know. Well, she sat so much that she developed a bed sore on her tailbone, and I found out later that a bed sore on the tailbone is like, that's one of the worst places you can get a bed sore. Yeah, it's like, yeah. holy shit. Almost completely inoperable. This will kill you, you know, if if it's not dealt with 100% of the time. So she went in for an operation, went into long-term acute, uh, what was it, LTAC, long-term acute care, and then she developed complications, had to go back for another surgery, <sighs> went back to LTAC, and then she got put into a nursing home. And she gets put into this nursing home, and all she wanted to do at this point was walk. If I could just walk one more time, if I could just walk one more time, oh, that's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. And you know what? Man, it's too fucking late. Yeah, you, yeah. You, her muscles were atrophied. She came up with all these crazy fucking ideas too. I want you to, uh, I want you to make me one of those automatic dog uh, retrieving leash things. And put it to a walker to where I can like step away from my walker, and if I need it, I can just push the button and it'll pull the walker right back to me. Yeah. Well, those fucking dog leashes aren't strong enough to do that for one. Mm -mm. And for two, if you can't balance and it were to do that, it, that thing would hit you and it'd knock you over. Yeah, yeah. You know, or she'd say, I want you to build me this. I want you to build me that. And I'd put my, I'd put my hand like six inches above her foot and I would say, I will build you anything. 
if you could touch my hand with any part of your foot right now, and she'd be like, I'll show you, you don't know, you don't know, and then she'd go, Arr! wouldn't be able to move her foot because her muscles were all atrophied, and she'd sure. be like, I can't do it. And it'd be sure. like, I can't help you try to walk. You know, we had we had licensed, trained professionals trying to get you to walk. You would scream at them and tell them that they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Yeah. And now, and now you want, you know, so what a, what a great lesson in life. It's like, you know, seize your opportunity now. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter how hard it is. Fuck, seize your opportunity now because what are you going to do when you decide one day? It's like, okay, the day has come. Now I want it. It's too late. Are you going Robin Williams on me right now? Like carpe diem, like seize that shit because the, the, the Reaper is looming. He yeah. oh that fucking that Russell Brand thing with Stephen Colbert. Indeed. How how awesome was that? The Reaper is looming, man, and it's true. So yeah, and I think even for me, I was uh, let's see, I was forty years old yeah. was when when this started, and I was atrophied. You know, I wasn't oh, in a geez. nursing home, and I I couldn't do anything when I first started bringing exercise into it. I felt like a seven year old girl, man. I I was shocked at how weak I had become. And how little stamina I had. I'm sorry, I can't even pay attention to you until I get out of the way that, you know, after Robin Williams did what he did. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Iron Maiden wrote a song in tribute to, Iron, uh, to, uh, in tribute to Robin Williams yeah. because Iron Maiden kicks fucking ass. Okay, I just, I had to throw some Iron Maiden kicks yeah, fucking ass in there. So. <laughs> I would expect nothing less from you. Ab- absolutely. But my point is, is that it, the, it it was difficult. I had atrophied already by forty, and but the the kicker here is the, the lesson is is that I was shocked at how fast I responded. My body didn't want to be atrophied. As soon as I gave it any possibility of of rebuilding, but my body seized that, and uh, I was really shocked at how much progress I made, how quickly. Um, my kids followed suit. Um, they incorporated exercise. They changed their diets. They changed. Um, it's it's really worth. Your body doesn't want to be like this. Your brain doesn't want to be like this. There, there's a better way that's actually easier. So, um, yeah, I I, I don't want to go out like that. Like the way that your um, your your old lady story there. Oh, uh, it was uh, awful. No, and as a Meals on Wheels driver for the past seven years, I got to see the different ways that you can grow old. And man, there's a right way to do it. And there's a whole lot of wrong ways to do it. And it really changed the way I looked at myself. And I was like, oh God, I can't stay on this road. This has a predictable outcome that I want no part of. I want no part of that. So you don't want to be that guy living in a shed going like, well, my life used to be good. And then I just what wasn't vigilant and everything fell apart and I never recovered. Yeah. I've been waiting here in this shed drinking for 35 years and an opportunity <laughs> has yet to knock, you know, I, I haven't had the answers haven't arrived yet here in my shed. And it's I, I'm in the book. I'm listed. Come on opportunity. What the fuck? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, but on the other hand, I, I, I see some people who have taken a different path and they're in their golden years and they're having the best time. They're having the best time. That's the path that I want. And I'm going to I'm going to start that at you know at 40 years old and and the more things I solve, the more things I see that need to be solved. So I'm still a long long way. You mentioned smoking. That's next on my list of things that Man, that Ultra Matt doesn't smoke. My highest oh. self is not buying Marlboro lights up. That's regularly. right. You want to like get to where you're in a twin uh, like a parallel dimension with this cat you know sharing as many of the the good qualities and as few of the bad qualities as possible well, absolutely and i look at that as changing lanes like I, I when i woke up to this i was in the slow lane man and i was barely keeping up with the flow of traffic in fact i was being left behind and one by one I, you know i changed the way that i eat that's changing the lane i incorporate exercise that's changing the lane i let some relationships fall away that maybe were dragging me down um, that's changing lanes. Well, giving up the smokes, that that's changing lanes. You know that. That so I'm on that path for sure. But I, I think I probably always will be. And that's and it's wonderful if you're going to dedicate your life to a cause. Why not make your life that cause? You know. <laughs> well, you know, if if we sit there and think about it, there's this thing that I was always told when you know it was you know I was melt 
meant to feel bad about, you know, being a little self-centered. You know, the world doesn't revolve around you. Fucking world doesn't revolve around you, Eddie. Well, it's like, guess what? My world revolves around me. <laughs> There's that. You know, if I cease to be, my world fucking ends. Yeah. And it's like, that's not licensed to be, you know, selfish or a dick. But at the same time, you know, what's the thing that they tell you before the airplane takes off every single time? If there's, if something horrible happens, you know, and the oxygen masks fall, put yours on, take care of yourself first. If you're, if you're fucked up, you can't help anybody. You know, um, I've, I've been working offshore in the Gulf of Mexico for 18 years now. And, um, one of the big things working on a boat is that, you know, if somebody is in harm's way, you try to save them, yes. But if, you know, you've got to enter into a place by yourself, you fucking let them die. Because, you know, you going in and getting trapped in there too, now we just have two dead people. Yeah, I've, I'm certified uh, Red Cross first aid, and that's something that they teach you too. Is that, that you don't go rescue somebody if it puts you in danger. Now the the actual um, first responders have two people that they got to get out of that. Bad yeah, place it's like, oh, one. thanks so, for your help, there, dipshit. Now we got to deal with now double the problem. Yeah, yeah you know? exactly. But uh, this is another area though where I think balance, and and the further along this path that I go, the more I see this. Is, it's about balance. So you you're right. You don't want to be narcissistic. You don't want to go nope. The world revolves around me and all my decisions are about me. But you don't want to pretend that you don't matter either. You don't. You can't live your life just for other people. So, you know, once again, life tells us, man, we, we got to find balance with, between doing right by the people around you and doing right by yourself. Yeah. And, and that's really tricky. That's really tricky well, to let's navigate. Well, kind of uh, move a... a like a slightly different way you were talking about this podcast with Joe Rogan and what, what was the guy's name? Yeah. Duncan Trussell. Yeah. Duncan Trussell. Okay. So, you know, for anybody who happens to hear this, you know, might want to check that out. And there's a few other things that I found make life a little easier. Like, uh, Chris Hardwick, the guy who hosts like all these talking dead and talking Saul and, Nerdist Industries. Right? Talking, yeah. yeah, talking this, talking that, talking, 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 talking. He's got this awesome, awesome book called The Nerdist Way where he teaches you how to, you know, turn your gifts and talents into something that maybe you can, like, monetize, capitalize on, make something where there was nothing. Yeah. Man, if you go through this book, he actually has this awesome story how he accidentally fell into hosting a dating show on MTV, you know, wound up, uh, wound up doing all this, all this great stuff completely by accident, you know, and then wound up kind of not knowing how to deal with it. It all sort of disappeared. He didn't really, uh, take care of himself or anything. And he, you look at Chris Hardwick now. He looks like the picture of health. You, you look at him and it's like, I can't tell if this guy's in his 30s or in his 40s or maybe he's in his late 20s. Maybe he's in his early 50s. I can't fucking tell. He looks great. But he got to a point where he was drunk all the time and filling himself full of pizza and all this other shit. But dude's smart as a fucking whip. Always was. And then he was watching... I think it was Jenny McCarthy, one of one of the other people that was on MTV on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, like one of his favorite things. And Jon Stewart makes a joke about how Chris Hardwick works here too. Yeah, he brings us a, he brings us our coffee. Yeah, yeah, you know. And it was like here here this dude just got called out on his favorite show by like one of his favorite guys. Yeah, to to a former coworker. Man, that's the kind of thing that could get you to put a gun in your mouth, but he used it to uh, motivate himself to bring it all back. And what the book is like great. If you're looking for answers on how to make yourself better, uh, I'd recommend that one. There's like the five second rule that honor honor your fucking good ideas by action, you know? And then uh, a big one for me is uh, metal motivation. 
and uh, I'm part of the uh, the the online uh, life domination coaching group. And one of the big tenets of that is, uh, you know how 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 do you like how do you honor your life? How do you how do you kick ass? How in the world do you fucking kick ass? How do you metal up? You know how do you not sit there and be a weepy little bitch? And actually do some kick-ass shit. And the answer is, you know, well, there's only one you. You're so unique, you know, that you're going to have gifts and talents that nobody else does. Or maybe other people do, but you've got them in a different way. So, you know, the way you get fulfillment is to uh, maximize your resources, all you are, and all that you can do for a... uh, for something that's greater than yourself, you know, for a purpose greater than yourself, you want to, and before I even got to any part of that, you know, I was building mountain bike trails in our community where there were none. It made me feel great. And, uh, you know, I've been somebody who's worked with power tools all my life. I've been a mountain biker since 1996. We have no trails here. A guy got permission, but he was having a hard time building them. I was like, I have a chainsaw and a lot of time on my hands. Yeah, yeah. And when I started, there was a half a mile. You know, now there's almost four miles. And um, I don't want recognition. I don't give a shit if anybody knows who I am or what. But nothing makes me feel better than when I hear people out there riding on these trails, just whooping it up and having a great time. You know, I I don't benefit, like, in any way that's monetary or anything like In fact, it costs me money to do this shit. But you know what? Uh, it would cost me my soul if I didn't do it. So Sure, it's meaningful for you. And yeah. That's rare. <laughs> any anybody, anybody listening to this that's trying to figure out, well, what do I do? What do I do? You know what? If you sit down and think about it, you can find something that you can do to make these little changes in your life. To where it's like maybe not immediately good. Maybe you're maybe you're soaring out of shape. Maybe you're gonna have this buildup of lactic acid in your muscle fibers, and you're gonna be like, "God damn it, I'm stiff." But that goes away. Sure. Maybe instead of drinking diet coke because it's got the word diet, and you think that it's good for you, I, what a what a what a terrible misleading fucking thing. All these awful assholes. I mean, if there's a hell, it certainly exists for the motherfucker that tried to convince people that fat-free anything would not make you fat. Yeah, right. Or that diet anything would fucking not make you fat. Right. You know, because, I mean, yeah, oh, I got a great idea. Let's fucking, let's take Coca-Cola, which is fucking horrible for you anyway. And let's, like, instead of using, you know, high fructose syrup, which is horrible for you, Let's use aspartame. Let's use NutraSweet. Let's use saccharin. Yeah, yeah. Let's use known carcinogenics to fuck. And and you know what? What are we going to do to like ensure that people know that this is diet? Make it taste like shit. You know, I, I honest to God have no idea how anybody in the world can fucking drink a diet Coke and be like, I prefer the taste of diet Coke to regular Coke. It's really addiction. It tastes like shit. This is addiction. I, I'm, I'm with you. I don't. I don't know how anybody could objectively taste that and go, "Mm, I want more. But it is. It's an addiction. And uh, yeah, what are you going to do about that? Wake up, (laughs) take the red pill. Yeah, yeah. Not be not be part of the matrix. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's the thing. The information's out there on all of these. You know, you, you can find it if you care to look. You can see that does diet pop really help people lose weight no actually they gain weight with that shit it's yeah and there's reasons for that there's a scientific well understood mechanism of how that works and it's not a mystery if you don't know that that's your own willful ignorance at this point that shit you know here's the fucked up thing too is that any carbonated beverage eats away at your bone density and sure carbonic acid just breaking it down it's there are like three things that are really bad for your bone density and i did all three 
the um, breathing compressed air under pressure, which I'm a commercial deep sea diver. That's what I do for a living. So you lose bone density. We know this. That's why you have to have long bone x-rays at your annual physical. Um, riding a bicycle, actually, you lose bone density. And uh, drinking carbonated anything, hmm. you lose bone density. I did all three. There was a time in my life where I always had a 12-pack uh, of Coca-Cola and two other 12-packs of like different flavored soda in my fridge at all times. Not only did I have that, but I'd also have, you know, you got to have your 12-pack of fucking beer, you know, and that was just what was in the fridge, you know. Then I had like spare Coke, you know, waiting for its time to be in rotation in the fridge because, you know... I was, I was a Jack and Coke drinker, man. I'm going to go through a lot of Coca-Cola. I guarantee you I'm going to go through at least six of them in a fucking day. Yeah. You know, I'm going to drink two in the middle of the sweltering Louisiana heat because there's nothing worse for you than drinking a fucking uh, a soda when it's hot. There's nothing fucking worse, you know, except for when you put a bunch of Jack Daniels in there. You know? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Hey, if I'm going to fuck up, man, I'm going to, I'm going to go all the way. Absolutely. I know that about you. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like if, uh, if hitting it with a fucking tack hammer is going to get the job done, then I'm going to get my 12 pound mall. Yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the Eddie Kernan way. It is. It is. So, um, well, yeah, so fuck, let's get to how I changed my life. All right. Because, you know what, it all sort of happened for us at the same time. Well, your big weight loss thing was way before. And uh, I got to, I, I was in a dead-end, horrible relationship with somebody who, it was just, it was, it was over. She was just done. And she was doing everything that she could to, to, to make me realize it was done. So I'd be like, bitch, get the fuck out of my house. But she didn't realize that I wasn't going to do that because I was ridiculously complacent. But I was miserable, so I was drinking way too much. And um, the irony is that uh, everything that attracted this woman to me was uh, she had systemat systematically dismantled. I met her, I was fit, I wasn't drinking, I was making a lot of money, one by one. Oh, you're so together, I bet I bet you could drink. I don't think that, it, no, 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 I shouldn't drink. That's, there's a reason I don't drink. No, I think you'll be fine. Let's get a couple bottles of wine and see what happens. You know, next thing I know, not that time, not the time after that, not the time after, after, after that, but eventually, yeah, okay, yeah, full-blown alcoholic again. Hooray! Uh, which, of course, led to bad choices, Stopping exercising, gaining a shit ton of weight, being miserable, fucking up at my job to a point where I had to leave my job. Now I'm no longer making the scream a ton of money because I'm fit and healthy and well balanced and everything. Now we're just sitting around and she's angry because she's with a fat drunk that's pissed off because I used to have an awesome life and now I don't. Yeah. Well, I think the cure for this is another fifth of fucking some sort of whiskey tonight. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to sit here and crank my playlist of fucking I'm so depressed music like a little bitch instead of doing something good about it. So she left, you know, in such a devastating way. But, you know, maybe some other day we'll talk about that. So then uh, I spent some time thinking, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to go back home. I'm going to go back. I'm going to leave Louisiana. I'm going to go back to Washington. I'm going to be surrounded by, you know, everybody that loves me is going to be like, fuck that shit, man. We're going to help you out, man. We're going to all hold hands and make a circle around you sway back and forth. Sing Kumbaya. Everything's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. That did not fucking happen. What? I know. Right. No, I got back there and it was like, Hey man, uh, maybe I'll find some time to hang out with you. I've got my life to live. I got shit to do. Uh, most people, Saw me maybe once, and that was that. I had two friends, um, three friends that I hung out with. I was there for two and a half fucking months. We had all the time in the world, you know, and I was sitting there trying to explain to these people, I am a fucking mess right now. I need my friends. And they were like, 
you're putting all these, oh, I didn't like the way that you put the requirement on me that I had to come see you. It's like, I'm fucking broke, you know? I don't have the gas to go to see you. Yeah. Well, you didn't tell me that. The fuck I didn't. You know, so I go back home. I'm all, I'm all sad. You know, not only that, but I got all these people who know that I have a problem with alcohol and I'm fucking sad, 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 sad as fuck. And they're all saying, let's get drunk. And I'm like, I have a fucking problem with alcohol. I kind of came here to kick that. Oh, you can handle it, can't you? Yeah. Well, if there's any one thing that's like going to guarantee a result, it's give a sad alcoholic the free uh, carte blanche to drink. What do you think's going to happen? Right. And then they get mad when I got drunk. Yeah. Well, fuck. Okay. So I was, I was convinced by my parents to stay for Christmas. Okay. Even though they were leaving to go see my other brothers and sisters in Colorado. Stay here. Why the fuck should I stay here for Christmas if you guys are going to be gone? Yeah. Sit in the empty house that I grew up in that looks nothing like the house I grew up in with nothing that holds my interest. Well, your brother's going to be here. And uh, he told me that, uh, yeah, I'll come hang out with you. I'm going to have a fucking week off. We'll spend all kinds of time together. Cool. Yeah, and so then he didn't do that. Uh, He came over one time. Brought a fucking box of alcohol, like a straight up, like a box, like it must have been like six bottles of wine and a couple things to make margaritas and all this other shit. Yeah. Got me fucking drunk. I'm uh, at this point, I'm a fucking Olympic power drinker, man. I can, I can teach a class on how to fucking, on how to go past the burn of alcohol and just like you know, pound a fucking triple Jack and Coke in God. under a fucking, in under 30 seconds. That'll I'll get it done. I, That'll get the job done. Even though it's been over seven months since I've drank, I could, I could do it right now. I believe you. I could, I could, I could easily go through more than a fifth right now, even though it's been over seven months and I could do it probably in under two hours. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, my brother who brought who brought the alcohol again i'm broke i can't bring no alcohol i'm broke man my my girls left me i've lost my job i'm a fucking mess yeah you know he brings over all this alcohol i fucking power drink it he gets all upset when i get drunk and he fucking leaves and i'm sitting there christmas by myself and i when i got over there my mom had like she had a, a house full of alcohol she had fifths and half gallons everywhere. I had, I'd gone through almost all of it. I'd gotten down to a point where I was mixing like, like this guava juice and gin. Cause oh, that was what God. I was down to, you know? And I sat Ugh. there and thought about it. I know, right? Yeah. Ugh. I sat there and I thought about it as I'm sitting there on Christmas Eve by myself could have been could have been back at my house trying to put the pieces of my life together. I've driven everybody away. It's like this is on fucking me. Nobody's going to help me. Nobody's going to come hold hands and sing kumbaya around me. Nobody. I have to fucking save myself. You know? And uh, I mean it, that was that was a hard pill to swallow. But you know, so I came back, I got a job I hated. Yeah. You know, and, um, and, but I stopped drinking Christmas Eve of, uh, I want to say 2015. Okay. So I got back and I started working in 2000, 2016, easily, easily the worst year of my life. Yeah. I had given up being a commercial deep sea diver, something that I really love. I was a fucking class one commercial sea, deep sea diver. You know, I, I'd been to 277 feet, which isn't like super deep for a lot of these people who regularly do saturation. But, you know, I'd done shit that would make most people fucking shit their pants. And it didn't faze me at all. No fucking problem. But I'm giving that up because, you know, I'm listening to the everybody else telling me that I need to realize that this part of my life is over and sure. stuff. and. 
I get this horrible job that I hate. These horrible people that I fucking hate. And uh, it's paying the bills. And I'm still heartbroken about the, the awful girl that left me and all this other stuff. And then uh, one day I'm like, you know what? I'm together enough to where it's not hard alcohol, but maybe I'll just stop and get a beer. Uh. So I did that. And then I got to a point where it was another beer and then another beer, you know, and I never went past three beers. But when I say three beers, you got to do it right. And it was like the big 32 ounce Miller High Life. Oh, you for know. Christ's sake. Okay. And then I discovered Four Loco, which is like 14% alcohol and it tastes like grape soda or whatever. And yeah. I never went past three of those. But then Friday was, it's Four Loco and Pizza Hut Meat Lovers Pizza Day. Oh, a dream come true. I know. And I ballooned up to 285 fucking pounds. And I was miserable and I was a dick. I started acting like a jerk at the job I hated. And then they fired me. And I went into a flaming tailspin for a minute. And then I realized, hey, this is probably good. So I went, to, I went back to being a commercial diver for a shitty little company that did not give a fuck about dive physicals if your gear was in calibration, if it had been certified. I was fine with that. You know, it it was awesome, too, because everybody there was a misfit in their own way. But we we all knew what we were doing. It was just that nobody would have us for a legit place. But we, we kicked ass and we got a job done that, you know, most people wouldn't do. Okay. And And we did it safely and it was good. And then I decided that it was time for me to reclaim my my deep sea diverness so uh i decided to quit drinking and i was going to need to lose some weight and that's when i talked to you because i knew that you'd been successful yeah yeah and uh and and you clued me in man you did and uh and then i i went to aa because i didn't know how to i i'd quit drinking before without it but I was like, fuck, I, apparently I can't fucking quit without it. Yeah. So I went and, you know, I, I, I was so upset that I was going to have to be one of these people that goes to AA every fucking day so that I don't drink. But I found out pretty quickly that I don't have to do that. You know, I can go every now and then. But from the minute that I chose to do that, I didn't, I didn't need to anymore. I didn't. You know, from the minute that I was like, my life has become, well, to use the AA term, unmanageable. Yeah. Which it really was. It was like, well, this fucking sucks. And I don't like it. But again, my world revolves around me. I want to fucking have a good life. Yeah, yeah. What am I going to do? Well, it's not drinking would be one thing. Yeah. But you know what? That's just, that's just phase one. You know, then you've got to get your, your diet and your exercise on, Uh huh. you oh, know? Yeah, yep, yep. I used my, I used my addiction. I have, I've got a highly addictive personality. I use that for good. I went out and got a Fitbit. And now instead of obsessing about getting drunk, I'm obsessing about, you know, how many calories I burned today. Yeah. I'm obsessing about how much exercise I can log. I'm, ex I'm obsessing about shit like that. Yeah. You've created a positive feedback loop. So, so the. The weight loss makes the, e the, the exercise easier. It does. The, the exercise makes the weight loss easier. Both of those are easier because you're not drinking. Not drinking is easier because you're eating right and getting exercise. Like all of these things feed on each other. and It's a perpetual motion you're machine. You're spiraling up instead of spiraling down. Like, yeah, it is a perpetual motion machine. You, you really have set the um, Eddie improvement machine, you know, uh, on autopilot and... and I love it. I love it. And it's, it mirrors my own experience. And I think other people can follow that. I, you know, we didn't invent this, you know, I, you know, I love it too. And one thing that, you know, I have lost 50 pounds. Yeah. I'm not even close to fucking done. Yeah. Yeah. But every now and then I'll go upstairs where I've got a full set of Olympic weights and dumbbells and stuff like that. 
And I'll pick up a 45 pound plate and I'll walk around. I'll just carry the fucking thing for like five, 10 minutes. And then I'll set it down and go like, God, that was fucking, I, I carried around five pounds more than that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Every second of my life. Yep. I slept with it crutching me, you know? Yes. Yes. Good Lord. Yeah. And then I'll sit there and think, well, you know what? I mean, I'm, I'm fit to pass a dive physical, which I've, which I've done. I'm, I'm diving for a legit company again. Uh, and, and that's really something because man, that's a heavy duty physical. I mean, you have to be healthy. Yeah. 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 And, and the, and it's funny too, cause the doctor looked at me and he said, well, you have ketogens in your, in your system. And that means that you've been fasting and that's fucked up. And, I'm going to fail you over that. And I said, doc, man, I'm on a ketogenic diet right now. I don't believe that it's sustainable for me, Yeah, but it's, it's helping me like readjust my body, but I'm, I'm taking in over 2000 calories a day. And that was all I had to say. And he was like, Oh, well in that case, fucking pass. Nice. So like, fucking nice. right on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Next time you see me, you know, that time I got up, I made sure that I like, you know, evacuated my body in the bathroom I didn't eat or drink anything that day, but next time on my way to a physical, I'm going to stop and have breakfast, you know? Yeah. And I'm still going to come that. in underweight. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is you put on so much muscle. So if you're talking about what the scale says, yeah, you've lost 50 pounds, but if you're looking at how much fat you've lost, it's more than 50 pounds because you got a shitload of muscle that you've put on in that amount of time that actually weighs more than the fat. So your transformation what the scale says does not tell the whole story. Of Actually, what you've you know done. what? I have one of those awesome scales that, uh, like one of those smart scales, and it tells me what my uh, what my body fat percentage is. So I do get to watch it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, you're right. Yeah. You know, my BMI has gone down, and uh, and it's and it's an awesome thing to see. And then you know when you've got like your little app on your smartphone. Yeah. That tells you you know like you know it says things like you know you get done like like lifting weights or riding your bike or or uh hiking through the woods with a chainsaw or something and then all of a sudden you feel like your smartphone go vibrate vibrate and you pull it out and it says you fucking crushed it you've gone one day above and beyond your exercise goals you hooray you it's fuck yeah man and then i get that fucking endorphin dump all that dopamine in my head that I was trying to get through alcohol. Yeah, here's your reward center firing. Yeah. Fucking A, man. And, you know, what an awesome thing. Absolutely. And you can project this trend out into the future of Ed Kernan and say, he's not going to go out like this. Eddie's transforming himself into a vehicle that can really have a fucking good time on this planet with the rest of your life. Like, like honestly, you're, the potential for good experiences for you I mean, it has increased astronomically for both of us, really, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I got to say, you know, were it not for, because I, I tried all this crazy shit to get healthy before, but you and my buddy Tom, I couldn't, I couldn't have pulled off what I did without you guys, because Tom, Tom is my, uh, He's my sobriety guru. You were my nutrition guru. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately for me, I knew enough about exercise, you know, that it was cool. But, you know, then you get to this point where, you know, you're not filling yourself full of the junk food, the prepackaged bullshit. Yeah, buddy. Which will fuck with your brain. Yeah, buddy. Because you're, it, it's, it's poison. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. fucking poison, you know. You put Twinkie the Kid in your fucking mouth and it shoots all this all these chemicals and all this horrible shit up to your brain. Yeah. And you, you can't figure out why you're unhappy. Yeah. You know, and then, so, uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm fucking so sad. I, I think I want to eat another Twinkie, you know, and you're just yep. fucking self-fulfilling prophecy. But well, yeah, the, the positive feedback loop that we described, yeah. it, it's the opposite. You get a negative feedback loop where you're eating shit that makes you feel like shit. So you don't want to exercise. And so, you know what I mean? So you, yeah. you feel like a piece of crap and getting drunk and watching Orange is the New Black seems like a good solution. That's right. right. I mean, hey, you know, I'm fucking, I'm, 
I'm, I'm already to the point where I might as well give up anyway. I yeah. might as well just go get a fucking half gallon because I know a fifth isn't going to be enough. Yeah. And sit here and fucking, and uh, instead of instead of hopping on my fucking custom built titanium road bike and fucking riding 50 miles today, I'm going to fucking get drunk in the middle of the day and fucking and uh, eat Totino's frozen pizza and watch reruns of Judging Amy. Sure, sure. I, I have done that before. Oh, that, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I've done that, similar. That things. has been my life. I know way more about judging Amy than I fucking than I care to admit. Yeah, I know it exists now, and that's more than I care to admit. Uh, so I didn't know that until yeah, just a second ago. Bad so. fucking bad, bad, bad times. So, man. so let me run this by you. So, all right, we've discussed some changes that we've implemented, and sure. we've discussed the positive changes that have come from from those adjustments. What's next, Eddie? So you got. You got your weight loss thing where you want it. Now you're, no, you're I don't. On it. Well, no, no, I don't mean you're done, but I mean that you've made the changes to your diet that you're getting this good result from. And so you know that that's working. That's not something you're going to stop doing. You're going to keep doing that. Exercise. You incorporate exercise into your life and you're like, you know what? I am better when I exercise. I'm going to keep doing it. I make that part of my life. And I'm better when I don't drink. You're so better when you don't you drink. Go. Absolutely. Absolutely. So moving forward and, and I have some similar stuff. Um, going for me that I feel good about like, okay, I'm on the right path with this aspect of my life and this aspect of my life. I'm getting a good result. This is what I want. What's the next lane change? What are you thinking? Well, you know what? There are a couple things, but a big one is first off, I can't, I can't say enough about the self-confidence that you get. Like for example, the owner of the company that I work for right now this is a smaller company. The owners out there quite often working side by side with us. And, um, you know, again, man, I'm, I'm working out every day. I want to, you know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, something. And I discovered that while I'm, you know, being the standby diver and you don't really have a whole lot to do, well, I can bust out my 200 crunches. Oh yeah. yeah. Like right then and there, you know, I can sit on the, the big case that I keep my, uh, my, my diving helmet in and I can whip out four sets of 50 crunches. And I had the owner of the company screaming at me one day, you know, jeering. Okay. Might as well give up. You're fat. You're fat motherfucker. Well, fuck you, you dipshit. You know what? That would have fucking, that would have shut me down. Even, let's see, March 5th was the day that I changed my life. And I started, like, not listening to outside negativity. Anything. You know, it's this thing that we oh, call... Oh, no, it, uh, you, you're still listening to outside positivity. Outside yeah. positive, <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. but I will shut down your negativity. But, you know, here's the thing is that, you know, I... I'm not going to look for an ex when I went and I was hoping for the kumbaya circle, that was an external solution to my internal problem. Sure. And it no shit. It didn't work. It never does. It never does. Nobody can do this shit for you. Right. You know, so now that, you know, on March 5th, when I decided to change my fucking life and it was like, I don't care, you know, well, March 4th, somebody screaming at me, you might as well give up. You're fat. Well, I would have been embarrassed and I would have stopped, you know, but yeah. now I'm just like, shut the fuck up. You know what? I can, I could bang out more than 200 crunches right now. I just, I choose to stop at 200, you know, doing a set of 50 is no big deal. I'll get up and walk around in a circle and then I'll, you know, get back down and do another 50. And guess what? This is the easy thing. And then he's sitting there going, it's not making you any thinner. Crunches don't make you lose weight, dipshit. All they do is fucking tone up your fucking core. Right, right, they don't right. Make, you, you're not going to lose fat doing fucking sit-ups. That's not, that's not what they're for. You're missing the point, man. <laughs> fucking yeah. dildo. Hey, how about this? How about you sit down and bust out fucking exactly what I'm doing right next to me? Right. Oh, well, I'm not going to do that. I don't have to. It's like, well, you know what? You might aesthetically look good, but you smoke fucking two packs of cigarettes a day. Yeah. And you're a spoiled little shit that doesn't have to fucking do anything, you know? And I'm actually working to make my life better. Here's, here's the absolute truth of it. While you might look good, while you might look like fucking business owner fucking Ken, 
you know, to go along with your fucking Barbie doll wife, you couldn't do this. Yeah, yeah. Because your fucking entire existence is beyond superficial. Sure. Well, here's a guy who's comfortable where he's at. So why would you do anything to improve that if you're already comfortable where you are? Where's the motivation? So exactly. I get it, but and I got to take a piss, so we got to wrap this up. But uh, but I I guess what I've gotten out of this is wherever you are in your life, man, you could do better. It could be better. It could be better. So figure that out. You know, honestly, the. Compare where you are now to what your highest self is. What potential do you have that you're not living up to? What can you do about that? Do you really want to live and die without knowing what it is to be your best? Do you really want to do that? Is that really, we got one crack at this. Do you really want to embrace mediocrity? Or That's or, right. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's one of the big tenets of, uh, of somebody that I really, really respect. Tear up your fucking contract with mediocrity. Absolutely. You know, here's the thing is that, you know, you will not progress unless you are, it, unless you're going against some sort of resistance, you know, in, unless you are going, that's how, that's how you build muscle with weightlifting. That's how you get ahead in like the business world. That's how you do anything. So, you know, my answer for, you know, what's the future hold? Well, you know what? Staying the course is that's a given but then to like expand plan in fucking pencil to steal another thing from the same guy who says tear up your fucking contract with mediocrity plan in pencil so that you can seize opportunities learn how to fucking spot an opportunity and and here's the big one spread some fucking joy you Spread know, the love. be yep. nice. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Be nice to people. Go out there and, and you know what? You see an old lady the other day. We were out we were out bebopping through town and we saw an old lady, you know, struggling with taking her groceries and putting them from her cart to her uh to her car. I didn't know this old lady, neither did you, and we walked over, helped her put her groceries in the car and took her cart and put it away for her and you know what? Small thing, but you know, man, you want to talk about like everybody bitching about this country going to hell in a handbasket. Oh, football players aren't standing for this thing. I can't believe it. Well, who the fuck are you to imply your fucking values? Football players shouldn't have to stand for this thing. We're going to divide the country. It matters who's fucking the president. It, it, my guy won. My guy didn't win. Boo hoo 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 hoo. You know what? Go be nice to somebody. Right now, face to fucking face. It doesn't mean dick who the president is. It doesn't mean fucking dick. It doesn't. How well, much is this going to change your fucking life? Well, you know what? Why don't you sit there and just fucking pull out a fucking hammer and hit yourself in the dick? Because you're going to make. You're going to you're going to make more of a difference than, you know, whining about who the goddamn president is. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Well, this is another area of your life that you didn't really mention that I see as a huge move forward is that you have made it your intention to spread joy, to take the 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 dickishness that was a part of your life and through emotional alchemy turn that around and and it's true i see wherever you go you're helping people you're friendly to people you are the opposite of a dick you are the anti-dick now you are a vagina sir you uh <laughs> you're just making everyone happy that comes in contact with you um so and that beautiful pink rosebud with the little hitler that's, absolutely that's, <laughs> that's you sir the um, world needs more beautiful vaginas. <laughs> absolutely. So thanks for being such a beautiful vagina, Ed. Um, <laughs> As opposed to being a big, nasty, grody dick. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know what? That would be a good subject for the next one. And this is a great place to stop. I so. think so, too. I think so, You too. know what? Hey, man. Uh, you know what, people? It's all up to you. Nobody's going to do it for you. And it's easier than you think. So... And so rewarding. It's so fucking worth it. That's it, it's so worth it. Feels great. It you really know? does. Spread some joy, motherfucker. And you know what? You don't have to quit being you. I actually love the fact that I get to swear 
for for positive results. Oh, I'm more me now than I ever have been. And I'm going to be more me tomorrow than I am today. And, and same for you. And and I think this is a path. We didn't blaze this trail, man. Um, this is a path anyone can take. Just uh, absolutely. Fuck yeah. All right. And with that, man, this has been Ultracast on uh, our take on how to change your life. Absolutely. Love is the recipe, Ed. It is love. Beer. All right, see you like that. Beer.